The Strategic Defense Initiative. The Star Wars program routinely falsified research data according to military sources at the time. Quote, we would lose hundreds of millions of dollars in Congress if we did not perform our tests successfully. We put a beacon with a certain frequency on the target vehicle. On the interceptor, we had a receiver. The hit looked beautiful, so Congress did not ask questions. The very idea of Star Wars, an umbrella that would shield America from Soviet nuclear warheads, was itself a massive deception. No knowledgeable scientist thought for a minute such a shield was feasible, yet the Pentagon proceeded with this fraud and faked other tests in 1990 and 1991 after the Soviet threat had disappeared. Edward Teller was charged with falsifying test data on Super Excalibur, a nuclear-powered X-ray laser built by Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. The project was canceled in 1992. All the talk about death rays and charged particle beams was little more than an elaborate smokescreen designed to hide the fact that the U.S. was developing a directed energy weapon that uses a high-power microwave pulse. Livermore Labs has been a central participant in SDI since 1982 when Edward Teller, the lab's founder, suggested SDI to Reagan. The father of the H-bomb received 40,000 shares of a laser research company that later defrauded its investors. Dr. Teller tried to sell Alaska on Project Plowshare, the use of six thermonuclear weapons to excavate a harbor at Cape Thompson, Alaska. In 1987, Teller returned to Alaska to propose the installation of a laser-like weapon system on the north slope of Alaska. The weapon system Teller was trying to sell was classified and not openly discussed, but the presentations indicated this Star Wars weapon was in fact HARP. In 1995, Congress killed funding for Star Wars, but HARP continues as the ultimate SDI radio frequency radiation weapon. The Reagan administration intensified the push into electromagnetic weapons development under Project Sleeping Beauty. A scientist working for the Army's Ballistic Defense Command complained to the House Government Operations Committee that as much as half of the entire SDI budget had disappeared into classified projects. Suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat. High Frequency Active Auroral Research Project, HARP. 30 miles from Fairbanks, Alaska, is the real focus of anti-missile defense that SDI was purported to be, and much more. The public patent was titled, A Method and Apparatus for Altering a Region of the Earth's Atmosphere, Ionosphere, and Magnetosphere. Dr. Bernard Eastland, a physicist who holds a patent for the fusion torch, and also holds a dozen others related to HARP that were eventually purchased by E-Systems and Raytheon. Patent number 4686605 claims the following uses. Cause total disruption of all forms of communications over a very large portion of the earth. Missile or aircraft destruction, deflection or confusion. Weather modification by altering solar absorption. Also, altering composition of the atmosphere. This patent was classified by the Navy under National Security Order in 1987 but other public patents exist for purposes of power beaming systems, artificial ionospheric mirror composed of a plasma layer, creation of artificial ionizing clouds above the earth, defense system for discriminating between objects in space, nuclear sized explosions without radiation. HARP is described as a research instrument for studying the ionosphere, an ionospheric heater or IRI of which many exist, but HARP is special. The ability to focus energy and the unprecedented amount in gigawatts, billions of watts, makes it literally millions of times more effective at heating the region about 120 miles above the Earth's surface. The atmosphere has most of its density below 30 miles altitude. 
The ionosphere is the very thin layer above that absorbs dangerous ultraviolet radiation and makes life possible on Earth. There is very little mixing normally between the two layers, but disturbances in the ionosphere translate to changes in weather, such as normally occurring sunspots and the solar wind. The main idea behind HARP is the ability to direct electrons along the naturally occurring magnetic field lines of the Earth and accelerate them to near the speed of light to form a protective shell of highly excited particles that not only block communications worldwide, but destroy missiles and their trajectory as they descend from space. The effects can be localized by punching a hole through the ionosphere to superheat an area 30 kilometers in diameter into a plasma shield. Any missile or aircraft would be destroyed that tried to fly through the plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. A hole in the ionosphere above an enemy country could kill by allowing solar radiation to strike the surface unhindered. Weather modification could also be used as an instrument of warfare by manipulating the electric jet and the jet streams that dictate climate. The publicly stated aim is C3, Command, Communication, and Control. The margin of victory in war is to block or intercept enemy communications and to secure your own. The signals in the ELF extremely low frequency range can be generated by HARP and heard anywhere in the world and are used for earth penetrating tomography, basically finding enemy submarines and underground bases. Dr. Richard Williams says the high energy experiments will generate the equivalent of the output of 10 to 100 large power generating stations and that, quote, tests of these kinds could cause irreversible damage. According to Dr. Elizabeth Rauscher, quote, the ionosphere is prone to catalytic reactions, so if a small part is changed, a major change in the ionosphere can happen. HARP documents admit that a thousand-fold greater amounts of energy can be released in the ionosphere than injected. Stanford University experiments beaming radio waves into the magnetosphere detected the signals halfway around the world. Some were amplified a thousand times. David Yarrow states, quote, Earth's axial spin means that a burst lasting more than a few minutes will slice through the ionosphere like a microwave knife, producing not a hole, but a long tear and incision. HARP documents describe intentionally trying to get a runaway effect in the ionosphere. Quote, the instabilities commonly studied are approaching their maximum radio frequency energy dissipative capacity, beyond which the plasma process will run away until the next limiting factor is reached. The first atomic weapons testing was done without knowing if the chain reaction would stop or keep going. Dr. Oppenheimer admitted years later that, quote, the government knew that the scientists didn't know. The decision to pulse several gigawatts of energy into the ionosphere could cross a threshold. Walter Richmond wrote of an account of such an event in a book entitled The Lost Millennium. The event began with a solar tap, a planetary short circuit. Quote, the surge of power became an avalanche. At the pole in the vertical plane of the Earth's magnetic field where the winds of magnetism would not rise to blow it out. One trillion watt seconds of energy unleashed their fury on the polar cap in the first flash. Even as it discharged, the ionosphere was recharged from the solar furnace. The first flash became a mighty roar that poured an increased and now steady stream of energy through the now stabilized short circuit. Kilocubit after square kilocubit of frozen wasteland boiled. Watt after watt of ever-increasing avalanche energy lit the polar cap with a glare that had never before been seen. Earth's an electrical motor. When the motor began to run wild, it would increase its rotational speed. Eventually, the Earth would explode from increased centrifugal stress. The Hart project manager describes the experiment of Earth penetrating capability using frequencies of 10 to 20 hertz pulses per second or maybe 1 hertz, 1 cycle per second type waves. This range of frequencies are the same dominant frequencies within which the human brain normally operates. The military, particularly the Navy and Air Force, have extensive research on the negative effects of extremely low frequency radiation. These effects have been well documented, but the government easily deflects public concern 
by playing down the effects and minimizing the risks. This is the same method used for other military systems, including nuclear weapons tests, LSD experiments, and radiation experiments, all carried out on unknowing subjects under the guise of national security. The environmental impact statement has been falsified as to the true nature of the weapon system, its capabilities, and its possible fallout.